Let's take a look at the bones in the pelvic or hip region of the body. What you're seeing as landmarks, this is L4, this is L5, this is the sacrum. The, these are the right and left hip bones. We'll be looking at the parts of them in a minute. This is a sacroiliac joint, your right sacroiliac joint, the left sacroiliac joint, and the pubic symphysis, which connects the right and left pubic bones. So if we take a look at the individual hip bone, let's take a look at the right hip bone. You'll need to be familiar with how to tell left from right, what's the inside surface, what's the outside surface. Embryologically, this began as three separate centers of ossification. In an adult, it now appears to be one bone. If I put this in the position you'd normally see it in in the body, this is the anterior most portion. This is the pubic bone. This is the body of the pubic bone. There's an inferior ramus and a superior ramus. That makes up the pubic bone. If I turn this slightly, you can see the ischium. Parts of the ischium include ischial tuberosity, the lesser sciatic notch, the ischial spine, and a portion of this hip socket or acetabulum. So this hip socket actually contains components of the ischium and the pubis and the ilium. So the superior most portions of the hip bone are the ilium. The portions you need to name include inferior, anterior iliac spine, superior, anterior iliac spine, iliac crest, posterior, superior iliac spine, posterior, inferior iliac spine. This is the greater sciatic notch. If we look at the medial surface of this, it's somewhat curved into a fossa or a bowl. This is the iliac fossa. This is a surface of the ilium that's forming part of the sacroiliac joint. This opening is the obturator foramen. Let's put two bones together into the scene. I'm doing that, I'm holding the pubic bone so that they're in contact. This helps you see that this is the left and this is the right hip bone. And the two sockets that you're looking at are the acetabular surfaces of the hip joint. 